Hey everybody, welcome to today's episode of the NBA Ask Aaron Anything podcast. Today is Wednesday, October 24th, 2018, and I'm Aaron Herzog, your host. I've got some answers for your NBA-related questions. That's what this show's about. Send them to me on Twitter, at Aaron Herzog, hashtag AskAaronNBA. Send them on Facebook. My name's Aaron Herzog. Send them to my email address, aaron.herzog at gmail.com. Send them face-to-face, like Monday's question. Came from my friend Rob Banowitz. Saw me in person, was like, hey, I've got an NBA question for you. And I beamed and smiled. If you want to make me beam and smile, if you see me out there in the wild, ask me an NBA question and throw a hashtag on it in everyday life. Also, as always, like I'm going to ask, please subscribe on YouTube or subscribe via Apple Podcasts. Give a nice review. It's a nice thing to do for me, and I will say nice things about you. Or I will promote your thing if you ask me to promote your thing. You see how what types of views these are getting? You can get this out in the world. I can promote your thing. Like, watch this. Today's question comes via Twitter from Nate Fridson, at Nate Fridson. Boom. Boom. Just plug this Twitter. You ask questions, you get plugged. That's how this works. Even though his question is incendiary and meant to provoke and try to start a fight between friends just because his Detroit Pistons beat the Sixers yesterday in what was a ridiculously great game. Very entertaining. Frustrating if you're a Sixers fan. Entertaining nonetheless. Blake Griffin went off. Can I talk about it? It's not in the question. But Blake Griffin looks legit. I love, I, he's basically their point guard. I love Point Blake. I love when he brings the ball up the floor. It's, it's fun to watch him run the offense. It's kind of a little bit stagnant. He's looking to move the ball, but he pounds it a little bit. Pound, but who cares? Because he does things like that, that kind of Euro steppy fake pass dunk, which was ridiculous. Go watch it right now. Pause this episode and just look up Blake Griffin's highlights. 50 points, game winner on an and one in overtime, draining threes, blocking shots, dropping dimes, grabbing boards. He's having a great start to the season, as are the Pistons. They're undefeated. They're playing well together. They've got a new coach. Maybe all they needed was Stan Van Gundy to hit the bricks, bring in Dwayne Casey. Now they're looking good. In general, they are a team on a mission. Andre Drummond working out in the offseason to to shoot jump shots, posted lots of Instagram videos about how he can shoot now. Blake Griffin, after being promised the world, by the Clippers traded mid-season to Detroit. A little bit of a shock now that he's had his bearings. A full off season, Coming back looking great in this new season. And then they got their coach, Dwayne Casey. Won coach of the year in Toronto. And got shown the door. Can you... Ah, what a... What a situation... Oh boy, I'm the coach of the year, and now I'm fired. Which might have been the right move. Toronto's looking good. They just needed. Sometimes you just need a shake up. Sometimes you just need to shuffle the deck a little bit, and hire your assistant coach, who was there anyway. That's that's shuffling the deck, but it's also fixing it. That's like you had the ace on the bottom of the deck, and you just moved it to the top. It's not really mixing things up a whole lot. But Detroit on a whole, team on a mission. And they're fun to watch, even when they are beating your favorite team, the Philadelphia 76ers, in overtime. What a ridiculous end of that game. J.J. Redick, if you, if you didn't see it, I'm going to sum it up. Spoiler alert right now. J.J. Redick takes a ridiculously stupid shot. 
fouls. Like, he thought they had a foul to give. Puts Detroit on the line. They sink two shots. To go up by two points. Sixers come down. Reddick's a man on a mission. Drains a three-point and one. Starts yelling about how he's the key to the Sixers victory. Starts cursing at everybody. I don't know if I like this aggressive J.J. Reddick. I like it on the floor, but when he starts getting into like, look how good I am mode, I'm turned off a little bit. It's a little braggadocious for me. He looks angry. I don't like this aggressive JJ. It's mean. I don't like a mean guy. I like funny guys. I like fun fellas. JJ looks like he'd shove you for no reason. He looks like he would just straight up walk up to you, put two hands on your chest, and push you backwards just for telling him to have a nice day. When he's in that mode, I listen to his podcast. He sounds like a pretty good guy. Used to collect watches way too much. Might have seen human trafficking in an Uber. That story went away. That story was not as big as it should have been, right? You guys know this. He told a story on his podcast with Mo Bamba about getting into... It wasn't an Uber. It was a, a, a car service. And apparently seeing a woman in a cage in the trunk. And all, and they, I guess, reported it to officials. And now he can't talk about it anymore. But it only sort of kind of became a thing. I don't know why everybody still isn't talking about that. He should do a JJMA where you ask JJ anything and everybody should just say, JJ, what happened to the lady in the cage? We need more information. Something needs to put closure on this story because I still worry about it almost every day. I don't think about it all the time, but whenever I listen to JJ Reddick's podcast, I'm reminded of it. Whenever I see him on our basketball floor, I'm reminded, hey, didn't that guy see a lady in a cage in a car? And I maybe told the authorities about it. I want to know what happened. Maybe that's why he's so angry. Maybe he tried to do stuff and nobody took him seriously. And now he's in vigilante mode, but he can only do it on the basketball court. Because he doesn't know what to do in real life. He can't just go up to every Uber or Lyft that he sees and check the trunk. But he hits that. <laughs> he hits that four-point play. And the Pistons come down with like 10, you know, time running out on the clock. Blake Griffin drives, gets past his defender, gets to the rim. Robert coming fouls him, makes the and one. Hits the free throw for his 50th point. Giving the Pistons a one-point win. Thrilling ending. To a great early season game. And Nate Fritzen's question today is meant to rile me up after that. He wants to know, hey Aaron Herzog, here's a question. If Joel Embiid is so strong, how come when Drummond allegedly, quote, touched his face, unquote, Embiid crumbled like a house of cards and slid six feet? Is Drummond that much stronger? Follow up, do you enjoy rooting for a flopper? So two questions today, both from, from Nate Fritzen, at Nate Fritzen on Twitter. I'll give him a plug, even though he's trying to provoke, provoke me. Just like the two, just like the two bigs on our teams provoke each other. They have a rivalry on and off the court that stretches through social media. Last year, Embiid called Drummond out, said he doesn't play defense and can't shoot. Talk a lot of trash to each other. Here's what I'm gonna say. Did Embiid flop? Yes. Of course he flopped. You're not going to get me to, to say, oh, no, he, he didn't flop. He, he got hit. Look at that. Look at that. He got hit, and he should have fell. No. Anybody who watches that knows that Joel Embiid flopped. All right? It's a little bit of gamesmanship. 
It's a little bit of show. He's putting on a show for people. I'm going to tell you this story, Nate, and everybody else. When I was in high school and played basketball, yeah, that's right. I played basketball in high school. I remember specifically a play where a little guy drove the lane. I slid over, stood there straight up. I used my verticality. I, I will stand on that ground to this day. He ran into me, got a foul called on me. One of my teammates came over to me and was like, Aaron, you got to hit the ground on that. Hit the deck. He'll call the foul on the other guy. I said to my friend, I was like, look at him. You think I'm going to fall? You think that guy's going to make me fall over? Look at me. I'm big. I'm a big guy. And he can't knock me over. And the ref, you know, ref heard this exchange between me and my teammate and gave me a little thumbs up. It was just like, yeah, don't be a flopper. I kept my pride. And who did that help? Nobody. Not my team. It didn't help me. I got a foul called on me. I only have four more to go until I'm out of the game. This guy got free throws. One of the most efficient ways to score. If I just flopped, that's a positive play. That's what Embiid's doing. He's making the positive play for the team. He here's 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 what he said after the game. Uh, Embiid said uh, uh, what the referees were saying the whole game. There were a lot of cheap shots taken. At one point, I think referee Tyler Ford said that the next cheap shot, the next one's going to get a technical foul. So he was just taking that information. That's a smart play. He knew that the next cheap shot. Somebody would get a technical foul called on them. He took that opportunity. As soon as Drummond's hand touched his face, he'd be like, oh, there's a hand on my face. That's that, that could be construed as a cheap shot. So he hit the floor and he slid. He put aside his pride for the sake of the team. That's a true team player. He is willing to look weak. He's willing to look like a little brush in the face. Can knock him back can knock him back six feet. I wasn't willing to do that, and it hurt my team. I stood there and let a guy run into me and was like, ooh, look how strong I am. Can't knock me down. And that guy scored free throws and got to stay in the game. Embiid got to get Drummond out of the game. Didn't really matter. Six are still lost. And then... Guess what? He also gets to do the move where as soon as the foul's called, he gets to hop up on the ground like everything's okay and laugh in his face. It's the it's the com it's the comedic move to do too. The old bait and switch, the old misdirection, the old ooh look how hurt I am! Aha, gotcha! You're out of the game and I'm still in. All I was doing was just talking and playing basketball and trying to win the game. Obviously, on the second one, you can see that he hit me. And his hand actually touched my face. And then he dropped the bomb. But, like I said, I feel like I own a lot of real estate in his head. Which is a great quote from Joel Embiid. To which Andre Drummond saw on Twitter and immediately replied to Sixers beat reporter Keith Pompey. LOL, does he? If that's so, he wouldn't be so excited to have me on the floor. Come on, Drummond. Come on, Andre. Nate. You got to get behind me on this one. He can talk. This is not the way to talk smack. If somebody says, I mean, Embiid pulled out that move. He called somebody crazy. And then you can't defend yourself without sounding crazy. So you win. It's one of those classic, hey, man, don't get mad. And then no matter how the person responds, you'd be like, whoa, you're getting mad. I'm not getting mad. Whoa, stop. You don't have to raise your voice. Look, I'm not getting mad. Look, you don't have to talk soft at me now, trying to hold back your anger because you're getting all mad. That's what Embiid did. It's a classic trick, and Drummond fell for it. Just responding to the fact that you own a lot of real estate in somebody's head proves that you do. Maybe, maybe, Maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. But he looks like a goofball on this one, Drummond.
And then he had to come back later calling Embiid fat and out of shape. <laughs> Which may have been true last year. But Embiid's looking better this year. This is a great rivalry. Great rivalry. I looked up the numbers head to head in the regular season in four games against each other. Sixers won three out of four. Detroit got that W yesterday. Are things turning around? Who knows? Embiid scores more against Drummond. In general, Embiid is 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 going to score more against anybody than Drummond. Averages 27.8 points, 9.8 rebounds, about two assists, a steal, and a block per game. Drummond's at 13 points, 12.3 rebounds, 3.5 assists, 3.3 steals, and a block. Solid numbers from both. Very pretty even matchup. Drummond got the edge, rebounds, steals, and assists. And Bede's got a larger edge in points. And they battle. They do battle against each other. And they battle on Twitter and Instagram. Drummond said he was locking Embiid's ass up and running him to exhaustion, which is not true. It's not true, Drummond. You know it. He put up 33 and 33 and 11 with seven assists last night. That doesn't really seem like exhaustion. He also had three blocks. Drummond had a, a decent game. 14. He had a good game. 14 points. 16 boards, 2 assists, 3 steals, and 2 blocks. He only shot 6 of 20 from the floor, though. Eek. It's hard to, hard to brag. I mean, he's not... Where is he shooting from? Drummond should be leading the uh, Drummond should be among the league leaders in field goal percentage. He should just be dinking and dunking it in. Why is he six of twenty? Look, I'm obviously taking sides. You put you put Joel and beat against anybody, I'm gonna not I'm gonna bring bias to the situation. I am not an impartial observer. I'm very partial. But is Andre Drummond that much stronger, Nate? No, he's not. Joel Embiid is that much stronger mentally because he knows to sacrifice that little bit of ego to hit the ground to do what's best for his team. He doesn't have to look like the big strong guy. He'll prove that later. Look, Embiid comes from a soccer background, all right? He grew up playing soccer. That's what soccer players do, okay? People have been complaining about this for years. Ever since more European players started coming to the NBA, everybody complains about flopping. You won the game, Nate. The Pistons won, okay? Sixers lost, Pistons won. Who's going to win the, the, the battle of the the online feud? The battle of the online feud? That's not a good name for anything. I got caught reading Twitter while trying to record a podcast. And I'm not going to cut this out. I'm going to let you know of my mistakes. You know why? Because I don't... I've learned from my past mistakes... To not show that pride. I will let you knock me down. Because it's good for the overall strength of this podcast. I will not stand and take a hit and get a foul called on me. 
when I could let myself get knocked down by a breeze, by a little brush of the cheek, and then you get kicked out of the game. That's what we've learned today. Nate, thank you for your question. Everybody else, keep them coming. On Twitter, at Aaron Herzog, hashtag AskAaronNBA, or anywhere else. I'll be here to answer more of your questions as long as you keep sending them a few days a week. Thank you guys so much for listening. That's the show for today. We'll see you later.